Hi everyone, it's Sheila here with my weekly update and this week I want to talk to you a bit more about my practice and a bit more about drawing and a bit more about technology and how I use that and how I don't use it in my practice. So I've been, earlier this week I was looking at one of my favourite um, female artists, um, Joan Eardley, who did most of her work in Scotland in sort of mid 20th century. Um, she's really quite well known for um, a number of things. You might be familiar of some drawings she did. She's uh, worked in the Gorbals in Glasgow, which is quite a deprived area of Glasgow, and she did lots of portraits of kids. Um, which are just beautiful, but um, I really, I think I <laughs> like her landscape work more. Um, and she did a lot of work in the northeast of Scotland in Aberdeenshire, and she did these kind of things, and she just had a fantastically loose, expressive style. Um, and yeah, some of her little sketches are lovely. That's actually over two pages. Um, and the works like that, when you see that, piece in particular in real life is just absolutely stunning. Um, so I'm no jo Joan Eardley but I love her work and it's really interesting um, just looking back on her work and, and finding out more about it. One of the things she said was that I don't really know what I'm painting, I just paint and she was consumed by painting and she really was. Uh, worth checking out if you don't know her. Um, so I've been doing a lot of sketching this week. I'm, I've got lots of things um, going on in my head and I don't really know what I'm doing, but there is something forming. Um, and sometimes I just paint and something happens and sometimes it takes longer. Um, and drawing is kind of the p a foundation of a lot of work, but some work I don't do any prepare preparatory sketches for. It just happens. Um, but one thing that I do do in terms of, of, of drawing is I try and do life drawing and I go to a life drawing class every week. And over the last three weeks, because we've been in stricter lockdown measures, um, our life drawing class has been online. We've moved online. We've been using Zoom. Um, and it's been a really interesting experience. Now, in my other kind of professional life, I use online technology and video conferencing and, and Zoom all the time. So I'm very familiar with it. But I found the whole experience quite discombobulating. I found it quite frustrating. So my first week of drawings, kind of you can't really see them, but they're quite small and then there's a little pen thing, a bit frustrating. The second week, oh, you know, it's all right, it's all right. Um, and then this week I thought I would try some colour. So things got a bit better. I think this is probably one of the more successful ones because Ewan and Claudia actually had their masks on, which was quite a nice kind of mark. And I did something a bit looser and a bit more colour with the oil pastel thing. But I was reading something that um, another colleague of mine had written about how technology mediates conversation and how it controls um, what is happening around you. And it suddenly hit me why I was feeling so frustrated with my drawing. Um, my life drawing, because the technology and having to do it this way took away, I suppose, the freedom and the space. It changed everything in terms of how I was drawing. Normally, I st I'm standing at an easel. I was sitting at my desk. I have normally there's a, a, a real model in front of me. I have my gaze. I can move around. I had a fixed gaze from the camera. Um, I was limited in size by the size of my laptop. Um, and the lighting was slightly different. Normally we're drawing, uh, you know, doing proper life drawing with, with uh, nude models. We, also, we had clothes modeled because it was Ewan and his family who were modeling for us. And it was just a very, very different experience. But the thing that actually the technology did most was it took away the emotion, the, the emotion and the feeling of the room. Because sometimes when you draw, it is more about the feeling and the emotion that you're cr creating um, rather than the I suppose the technical drawing it, itself, although that is important and I often um, think of, of life drawing as a bit like grammar for drawing in that you kind of have to get things right because if you don't it looks quite odd. But it was a really, um, yeah, it was a real revelation for me, a bit of an epiphany moment because I use technology a lot. Um, I take photographs all the time of places and I use photography a lot, like these photographs um, in my landscape work all the time and I, I think there's a different emotional connection because I'm taking those photographs more as I think as an aid memoir and I can you know I do sketches as well um, 
Joan Eyre, like, I was just kind of wondering how much she might have used a, a camera phone if she if she lived in this day and age. There's some great stories of her, um, you know, battling against the elements in Aberdeen and you know, people helping her hold on to her, her cameras onto her easel as she painted outside in the pouring rain and, and wind. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a wimp. I'm <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, but I do wonder if she would have done that now. Um, I think certainly you feel the energy and, and um, the emotion that she must have felt from the weather when she, when she was doing that. But it was an interesting kind of thought process this week um, and really re made me reflect on how and when technology is really useful and, and when it adds and when it actually can take something away from your practice as well. And I suppose it just emphasised the importance of emotion in, in artwork as well. So that's a bit of a long um, update this week, but it's something that I find quite important. Um, and it, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy that I've made that discovery for myself, that self-discovery. I'd love to know what, what you think as well. So do let me know in the comments as ever. Um, it's been great for all the likes and the comments this week on social media. If there's anything you want to know, just check out, uh, go over to my website, howshelissies.co.uk and take care, have a lovely weekend and I'll catch up with you next week. Bye.